your first time major champion missy gannon joins tour life again missy thank you so much glad you jumped on a little earlier i know you have a hard time out so we'll get you out of here before eight was it eight o'clock that you have or uh yeah eight o'clock you got to be gone yep yep okay we'll 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 get you out of here by eight (laughs) o'clock but uh i guess how does that feel to be a first time major champion i mean it's it feels great it's the ultimate goal right like it was sort of where i was trending and it it's such a hard thing to do uh in such a strong field now so to be able to to get it done this past weekend was uh amazing and it's so early in the year too which is incredible how does it feel to have it at like a new venue right mm-hmm. like some place that doesn't really have any history yet um i i think they just recently opened it I, mm-hmm. I talked to talked to someone that is in the the area and they said it's it's you know there has been people that gone out and played but it's a very very new course and to us as viewers you know we're watching it for the first time so how does that feel to kind of have your name cemented on that course and you know after watching it I think it's probably one that they're going to go back to and and play more majors at hopefully yeah it was uh it- like practice was tough right whenever we're learning a new course it's always a little bit more stressful because you've never been there before you don't really have any um even any like data or numbers to go off of um which is something that i like to do but uh it was also kind of a cool challenge you know i played in uh joe mess uh practice round and i played blind and it went actually pretty well and uh yeah, just sometimes those, there's certain courses that suit your game. And thankfully, this one was one of those. Um, even if I didn't quite have the forehand that um, I think would have made some of the holes a little easier for me, uh, it, it seemed to not matter in the end. For people that aren't familiar with your game, when you say like suits your game, what are what are the courses that suit your game versus courses that you're going into saying, okay, I'm a little bit behind the eight ball? Um, I think that I'm despite not having like a distance forehand, I'm a pretty good scrambler and I don't really find myself off the fairway too much. And if I do, I'm not off the fairway by, by a lot. Um, so I'm able to get up and down for par if I, if I kind of have an errant tee shot or second shot. Um, and I think, yeah, I think I led the field in scramble rate or I was really, I was up there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was able to capitalize as well. I, I think technical courses are just something that I thrive at. And even the last few holes that are a little more open, um, you know, I really trust my discs in the wind and I, I, I just know what, what they're going to do. And I trust myself to make the right choices. Um, and so I think it's just a, a, it's a course that challenged your mental game and how well you can stay in the fairway. And I think that's where I tend to shine most of the time. Do you think also? Your, oh, go ahead, Yuli. What was your best finish before this one at a major? Um, well, it would have been Worlds when I took second last year to Kristen. Okay. Um, so that was a yeah, a nice battle. That was another one that I felt really close, um, and I could have taken it down. So uh, yeah, I think that that was one of my better finishes. And I also, I think I also took, I don't know, I think I've also taken another podium at a different major, but I'm not sure. Okay. Um, the other question I have is, you know, this being a new course, we saw some, and to be fair, like there were two days that the wind was very, very difficult. And Mm -hmm. if you've ever played in Texas, it's not like East coast disc golf where we get into the woods and we're like, Oh wow, there's no wind in here. Mm -hmm. The trees and stuff like the wind finds a way to get through into the fairways. It can swirl. It's very, very challenging. Mm -hmm. So do you, did you think this course posed like a fair challenging test or do you think it was maybe a little bit too hard with some of the scores we were seeing with, I think, you know, only a handful, was it six, seven players? Yeah. Seven players under par, the rest Mm -hmm. were over par. Yes. So that was a, that was, I think on the second day, uh, that's when the wind was up. It wasn't quite as high as the final day, but it was still enough to affect every single fairway. Um, but you wouldn't necessarily be able to feel it on the tee pad. And then all of a sudden you're starting to walk down the fairway and you could feel, you know, there, there was a lot of dog leg holes. There were a lot of like two shot par fours 
And so the wind was kind of coming in a different direction halfway down the fairway. Um, so that was a kind of a big like wake up call, but I'm glad that we got that day of wind earlier so that the final round, I kind of, I think the wind was similar, um, but I kind of had a better idea of like, okay, if I get to the tee pad early, maybe like walk down the fairway a little bit, throw some grass or do something to see if there's something going on down the fairway. I did that on hole one even because we were there uh, pretty early. Um, and yeah, I think five just minutes trying... early. <laughs> yeah. Well, we kept getting there. Like <laughs> me and Eve Evelina and I, we were like, just, we kept getting there so early and we were just sitting there for like 15 minutes. I don't know what we were doing, but, um, yeah, it was, it was very challenging. I think there were only a few fairways that I feel like maybe just need to, um, get a little bit more action to, or like, a need to see some tree limbs or trees sort of um, taken out because there was maybe a couple of spots where, yeah, there was an unnecessary tree, kind of small tree in the middle. Um, but other than that, I don't think, I think the fairways were pretty fair and yeah, it was challenging, but I think that it, that's okay. I think that the, you know, the birdies were out there. It just, it was hard, um, you know, just even seeing by, the, after the first round, we had three people at seven and six under. Mm -hmm. um, so they were out there. It was just hard to replicate multiple times because of just how tight the fairways were. I think the other thing that this course does well, and hopefully this is, you know, for future FPO courses is it, it wasn't a birdie fest in the sense of where a lot so, you know, some of these courses we play, it's like you throw one good shot and you're going to birdie that hole, whether it's a par three or if it's a par four, you get, you get off the tee, you're going to birdie that hole. And I think it's a lot harder when you're adding in multiple shots of where, okay, I now, instead of, you know, if I play a, a short par three course or a par three, 50 par four, 54 hole course, if I throw 16 shots that are good, I can get 16 birdies. Mm -hmm. If you now go to like a par 72, if you throw 16 good shots, you might get no birdies. Mm -hmm. Like you have to throw a good shot and then follow it up with a good shot and then follow it up with a good putt. Because the other thing I liked about this course too, and maybe you can talk to us a little bit about this if you threw it inside of circle two, that wasn't good enough. There were mm -hmm. certain parts of the circle where it's like, don't go in there. This is bad. Like yeah. you're not going to have a good putt. Do you like greens that are like that? Yeah. I think that um, as long as you're not messing with circle one too much with trees and things like that, um, I certainly don't mind obstacles within circle two. Um, you know, a lot of the time it was like circle two's edge or, you know, very makeable ranges, but you had to still, you know, be accurate up to the green. Um, and then also there were a lot of like, uh, sort of like slanted greens and, uh, not a lot, but they, they did what they could with elevating some, some baskets. Um, and yeah, just, just really strategically placing the baskets. I think there's only one, maybe one hole that had trees like inside circle one, but it was one of the, I, would, I don't want to say softer par fours, but it was a slightly easier par four. I think it was hole five, which I say mm -hmm. slightly easier, but it was one of my only double bogeys. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I don't, I, 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 I don't mind that at all. And I think especially like there was uh, I think I like hole 12, was just a dead straight shot from the woods, but then the, the basket was out in the open. And it was one of the first um, areas where a lot of spectators kind of congregated. Oh yeah. That's right. when they had a nice, a nice little crowd in the back. Yeah. yeah. So that one is like, that's a, a very straightforward, literally and figuratively shot. But if you didn't get, you know, I was finding myself in like the rough on the left side, just outside circle two, mm -hmm. you know, you had to still execute. They made that par three more technical, even though it seemed very straightforward, um, which I, I, I liked that aspect of it. Uh, Yuli, I'm going to try to figure out why I'm blurry real quick. I'm going <laughs> to get out and come back to see if that okay. works. If you want to ask a question, I'll be back in a second. You got it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Missy. So, 
big money missy <laughs> every time you win it's like so much money i don't know i, I don't know isn't that the best <laughs> nickname ever though i feel like big money missy it's it's pretty awesome and it's great that i'm isn't i it? continue to back it up which is even better yes. and i'm not even thinking about it but it's just so crazy that it's working out like that <laughs> All right, hopefully that yeah, so Am I better now? Am I clear? So, I was looking like a potato you, again. You are, yes. Yeah, you're good. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Where, where were you at kind of mentally going into this tournament? Major championship, first one of the yeah. year. You came so close at Worlds, like you mm -hmm. were saying. Like, where were you? I, uh, I was kind of surprisingly very calm and trying not to think too much about the results and trying, you know, you, see, you hear it all the time, trying to stay in the moment because I found myself, um, you know, at, at chess.com, I found myself like thinking about the finish and thinking about the end and realizing like, I'm so close, I can win this. And even at Waco, like, you know, I, I historically haven't really played well at Waco, but for some reason this year, you know, I was trying so hard to like do better at that event and, um, you know, I'm, I, I just went into this event thinking, you know, I, I was was meeting all these young junior girls and talking to all these, you know, FA1 players who are looking to, uh, you know, be in FPO one day. And yeah, just enjoying that aspect of the event and trying to, again, just like take every day, you know, as it came and I was I was really nervous going into round one. I think my nerves have been higher than ever going into the round ones this year. Um, I don't know why, but I think it's like maybe just the, the thought of like wanting to start off the tournament on a on a good note and try to shoot hot. And uh, luckily, I I did that, which was really nice. And I don't know. I think it was just it was just a good good test for me to see if staying calm and staying in the moment was something that was going to work for me. Let's jump a little bit into that final round. Cause uh, you know, uh, some stuff yeah. went down that I want to get your perspective on of mm -hmm. what you, what you, what you were thinking. So you're, you're, you're going to the final round with a two stroke lead over Evelina. Mm -hmm. No one else was really close, but like you had mentioned, you probably were thinking, Hey, if someone gets hot and shoots a good round, you never know. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the time, everyone else was eight shots or more back. So were you in your head thinking, Hey, if I play decent, I only have to be Evelina or do you not really go into the round thinking about, you know, where everyone else is, is at? Um, I definitely only had Evelina on my mind and, um, you know, I, Tom caddies for me and he, he was taking the responsibility of like, if I need to know, he'll let me know. But other than that, just worry about what's going on is. right in front okay. of you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was all I had in my mind and it was a, it was a weird round. I'll just say that. Yeah. Well, let's, <laughs> let's go in the first hole because this was one of the wildest decisions <laughs> I think I've ever seen on the, on a first hole. Evelina <laughs> throws her second shot. Like, tries to, I guess, to cut the corner up mm -hmm. high over everything. And it's very windy too. Like you said, like this is the windiest round of, of all four and mm -hmm. ends up basically throwing the shot that didn't turn out well. And then now you're in it. She's on a different fairway, has mm -hmm. to kind of throw the same shot, ends up taking a double bogey on the first hole. At that point, do you think Evelina kind of was so far behind the eight ball that it almost knocked herself out? Versus if she would have played a little bit more conservative conservative and like, just try to play that hole for par after, you know, poor drive off the tee. I don't necessarily think she was thinking like, Oh, I'm done for, but I think that in hindsight, she probably wouldn't have thrown that shot. Uh, if she had a second try at it, I think she, I was, I had a great drive. I was set up for birdie. Uh, unfortunately I messed up the upshot. So like, she didn't know that that was going to happen, but, um, yeah, I even, I mentioned, you know, I mentioned this in my post round interview, like if I was her caddy, I would not have suggested that knowing that the wind was, was pretty crazy and knowing that I don't think she had a caddy though. Right. She, she, she didn't, didn't have anyone there. Yeah. Okay. No. Um, but yeah, it's only hole one. Um, I don't think that, 
yeah, I, again, I don't think that it was the wi wisest decision, but uh, you know, in the end, that that's just how how it goes. Sometimes yeah. you you sort of just make those those decisions and you have to live with them. But I think if it was if it were me, I and I and I chose to do that, and I was now back another two strokes. I don't think that I I would necessarily think that I was out of it, but it, I certainly would be you know kicking myself a little bit for getting so aggressive on hole one. Um, but yeah, it was it was tough. It was one of those like weird again weird rounds for me because uh, as a as a human being i feel bad that yeah are you guys talking after that hole like how <laughs> no 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 i think okay. that you know she yeah she i think she could she kind of was just like all right yeah that you know whatever that that happened um and we were just on to the next one we didn't have to wait at all there were no backups so it was very much like oh, on nice. to the next one yeah um but uh yeah it was just a weird kind of like emotional like i it's it's hard not to feel a little bit bad but also i'm on Trying the be benefiting there. side yeah, yeah exactly so yeah it was a it was a weird it was a weird day that's for sure yeah. did, that, did that really like calm you down like moving into hole two where you're like oh wow okay so now it's like four shot i can just kind of I, yeah I got, I got four like this is awesome type thing I, you know because too too stressful and we'll get into yeah. that later because i think it, i think it gets closer as yep. the round progresses mm -hmm. so let's move on and and yeah do so the rest of the round so the the front nine kind of goes and yeah. I, I would i would say you probably weren't like if you had no idea what anyone else was if you couldn't see anyone else's score but only saw your score mm -hmm. you would probably think like man, I'm, I'm not playing incredible, but I'm also not playing bad. Right. You, yeah. like you said, you weren't able to really capitalize on some of those birdies. Uh, you weren't getting close enough. I think on some of your upshots because of how mm -hmm. windy it was and swirly to make those birdie putts. Like, I think you did end up missing a couple circle twos just by a little mm -hmm. bit. And those are putts that we normally see you make. So those yeah. are, you know, probably a little bit of a wind, but you know, you're going through the front nine and you know, you're two over, but now your, your lead has extended over Evelina mm -hmm. by one. And now you have own Scoggins though, four under through the first 12 and only mm -hmm. four back. We've seen what she did in the previous week. Yeah. Now, is that something where you were saying, you know, Tom was going to let you know, was there any mention of like, Hey, right now. <laughs> no, he did not say anything because I think he also knew that it, it was still four strokes. Right. Mm -hmm. And I still had more holds uh, to go, which could go either way. Um, but, you know, I think he saw that it was, it was a it was a tough day, and he he obviously was keeping his his eye on Owen because when we had gotten to a certain point, maybe later in the round, um, whole after hole sixteen or something, he did mention to me, you know, Owen was was doing really well, but unfortunately, she ended with the you yeah. know two bogeys or whatever she did. Um, so yeah, he unless it got down to maybe two strokes, okay, that's when he would that's when he would let me know. Oh, um, Tom's a, a two stroke buffer kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's confident. He's confident yeah. in me. That's yeah. all I know. <laughs> so did your playing style change seeing how much Evelina was struggling with putting? Like knowing mm -hmm. like we can all agree she is probably one of the best, if not the best players off the tee. Her, her drives are very, very good, but let's be honest. She could not hit the side of a barn that day. Yeah. And yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't one of those where it's like, Oh, off the change. Oh, that's a weird spit out. Like she was airballing putts by feet, like two to three mm -hmm. feet missing the basket. Did yeah. that change your style of play of being like, okay, I, I need to force her to come and get me instead mm -hmm. of making me fall back to her. Yeah, I don't know what uh, what hole it was on, but I I remember thinking, you know, every time she was inside the circle, like twenty feet in my mind, and it might have started earlier on in the round before I saw that the trend of her putting was kind of staying the same and and being off. Um, I was in my head just counting counting that stroke, mm. like oh, I just lost I just lost a stroke on this hole before she even put it out. And then, and then right, uh, right after that, it would, it didn't happen that way. And so I'm like, okay, reset. We're still chugging along. Like we're good. Um, 
as far as my gameplay go, no, no. I mean, I, I was off myself, honestly. I was still trying to attack every hole like I did in practice, like I did in previous rounds, um, and trying to get the best score that I could. Um, because thankfully, I did have a handful of strokes going into the final hole, but that's what, that was my goal. I, mm-hmm. I wanted a handful of strokes. I don't, I, as, as exciting as it is to have it be a battle down the last putt, I, I don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, yeah, I, I, in the end, at the end of the day, I just, I stayed, I was, I played a cleaner round and, um, you know, she kind of had a few more, a, a few additional mistakes that, that ultimately get me, got me how many strokes I had at the end. Um, and of course, so, like, uh, I was yeah. gonna, of course, like that too. It almost seems that if you start trying to be safer off the tee, that mm-hmm. all of a sudden, like you hit it, you you don't get clean off the tee, and you hit a tree, yeah. and you're like, "Why the heck did I try to go the safe route? I should have been aggressive." Now you start second thinking. So mm-hmm. it probably does make sense. Just on a course like that, there weren't too many decisions. You know, no. I think 18. There was maybe a couple of this. Uh, 18. And then what was that one hole that was like your nemesis that you kept hitting the tree in the middle of the OB? Uh, you did yeah. The f- yeah. Hole five, hole five. The one hole- that's like, it's pretty short. It's only like 450 yeah. or 60 feet, but it is. There's a zone. Yeah. Yep. Hole hole. Five's a, <laughs> one of those where like, if you don't throw a great drive, you might say, Hey, let me lay up and then pitch over and take yeah. my par. But other yeah. than that, there weren't that many holes that you were having to think like, should I play safe or should I go for it? So mm-hmm. kind of pedal the metal. Um, I want to yeah. ask you two course design things real quick. Did yeah. you like the drop zone on hole 17 for those that didn't watch or didn't see it? Hole 17, really cool Island hole. They built it mm-hmm. out with, I mean, this course was beautiful. They built it out with wood. It made, it made what would have looked like a really boring hole really exciting Mm -hmm. and the drop zone was a 45 foot putt i think it was probably more like 50 to 55 okay yeah what are your thoughts on like drop zone putts i think for an island hole like that so the island was only just a little bit outside the circle in in terms of um you know diameter so Mm -hmm. it was a pretty small island um and like like you said it had kind of walls built up on the sides which actually ended up you know, making Evelina stay OB on yeah. that last, on that hole. So, I love it. um, well, yeah. not for, not, not against no, Evelina. Right. I just, I like the idea that you can't skip in. Right. So sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but right. Like I like that they made it, a, even though it was only 280 feet or whatever, I like that they made it so that you had to throw high enough, you were able to either go, if you had to go forehand, you could go forehand off the tee or you'd go hyzer, which most people did. Um, and yeah, I don't mind having the ability to make the putt from a drop zone, especially if it is about 50 feet or so. I think that that's fine. Um, I don't think we need to go to the whole re type scenario um, in that, in that uh, design, but um, yeah, I think we saw a couple people make it from the drop zone. There really weren't a lot of people. And also on that last day, it was like a ripping headwind. So good luck trying to make that yeah. putt anyway. Um, why are so, you yeah. against like a 250 foot throw until you make the Island? I'm not necessarily against it. I think that it could have been fine if they did that. Um, like, don't but, you feel like that would adds a little bit more to where it's like, no lead is kind of safe. Yeah. Because let's be honest, the worst score you're getting on that hole is a four. Mm-hmm. And that, that's, that's my, when it comes to drop zones, my least favorite thing is when you're capping a score. Yeah. Hole 17, the biggest lead change you can see on hole 17, other than mm-hmm. if someone throws an ace, which someone almost, who, who almost made it? It was uh, Lisa, Lisa, Lisa Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's chained out. Yeah. Other than an ace, the biggest lead, the biggest switch in scores on hole 17 coming down the wire is two strokes, yeah. a birdie and a bogey. Yeah. Like I would love to see it to where someone could birdie and someone could double or triple. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden it's like, Whoa, wait, what just yeah. happened? So that's my only thing is like, I hate the idea of like capping it to where yeah. like you, you just get bailed out is what I'm mm-hmm. saying. No, and I it, did, it wasn't affected you. You threw a great shot. So, right. But I, but I agree. And like, it, you know, coming off of 16, Evelina, Evelina and I both got pars and I was like, okay, 
worst that's going to happen is I lose two strokes on, exactly. on 17. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. You got to get the viewer at home, <laughs> though. Yes. Think about us watching. I, I get we want to see it. Carnage. <laughs> I also wonder if it's because we weren't the only division playing that course, if they uh. just didn't want to play too too like play around with the rules too much. Unfortunately, I'm not you won't be sure. here for my rant, but that will be a part of my <laughs> rant coming up. Of yeah. Something that I think that is holding disc golf back uh, or yeah. the pro tour back is, is we're having to make, you know, these courses and design, not for you guys, but designed yeah. for everyone. Um, yeah. And it, and it was FP 40, which I mean, you know, there, there are talented people in FP 40, but I think that, um, I wonder if, yeah, if they could have had different rules for our yeah. division or not. I, I just don't know. And also that's another one of those things where like they probably, I mean, it's the PGA, so they can do it because they're the ones who, 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 you know, finalize the rules for an event. But um, so, I mean, they could have made the exception of having like special stroke and distance rules for that hole or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not against it. I just, I guess in the moment I'm like, great, that's, that that worked out in my favor and it was it oh yeah was fine, but. yeah no it's great great for you coming down all right a yeah. few more questions and we'll let you go here hopefully on time um this was a question that was posed actually on debate night a little while ago and i actually pushed back a little bit by saying i don't think chris and tatar has the intimidation factor they're they're basically saying you know does chris and tar have the intimidation factor like a tiger woods or you know conor mcgregor back in his in his day where they would just their presence would just make people play tighter or, or you know fold under pressure mm -hmm. i don't think kristen poses that but we have seen it happen to some players where she's on lead card and they kind of falter you were one of the more outspoken FPO players of where you've kind of blatantly said, like, I don't care who it is. I'm confident in my game. I can beat whoever. Mm -hmm. um, are we now seeing, are you seeing that for more FPO players this year? I don't know necessarily what it is. I think, I think that uh, people were just, I'm just going to say we, I don't really, I don't know anything really about everybody else, but um, I think we just saw that the biggest thing about Kristen was that she was the more consistent player on mm -hmm. a consistent basis. So, you know, in my mind, I'm like, okay, what do we got to do to just try to be consistent? You know, whatever. I don't really know. That's a really hard question to, to answer and a really hard thing to implement because Sometimes you're just going to have off days, but um, she's had off days too. And, but she's able to bounce back. She has that like bounce back fa factor. And sometimes she bounces back like tenfold and she'll shoot even. And then she'll all of a sudden shoot like eight down or something, you know? Um, so I think that it's just a matter of players becoming more confident in themselves and being able to have that bounce back factor and just have, more confidence in their ability to, to stay pre stay in it and stay present. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it's funny because she's, she's so nice. And she like, I literally, I'll tell you, I was in, I, after my round, after the final round, I was doing all the whatever post round interviews and pictures and whatever. And I was like behind, it was at a brewery. So that's where the, the course was held, which is really, really cool. It had such a cool vibe for everybody to come and hang out. Um, but, after the round, I was behind the brewery, kind of figuring out where I was going after. And I see this car pull up. I'm talking to Terry Miller. Three people come running out of the car, and it's Kristen Silver and Kaidi, another uh, Estonian player. And you know, they just come running up to me, congratulating me, hugging me. You know, like just they're all they're they're just such nice people. And mm -hmm. maybe I've had those interactions with her, and we've we've played so much together um, that there's this like you know, there's this respect for one another. And, um, yeah. So I think that that's, that's kind of what separates my brain from like her being this just dominant, scary force. Um, because I just know that she's just an, a regular person who's really good at disc golf. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's, it's different. People have just different. Well, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, in the, so when you're going into the final round, did you take a, you're taking a peek at where she's at. Though. Yeah. Totally, like you're going totally. down the leaderboard and being like, how many do I have? 
Kristen by. And yeah. you're not doing that with probably everybody. You're skipping people to get to Kristen. <laughs> yeah, so, totally, totally. But like like he was saying, like you were on here before and you're like, I don't care who it is type thing. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. there still is always going to be that factor. Like if I'm winning a tournament and I look behind me and I mm-hmm. see Ricky Wysocki's on on the second card three strokes back, yeah, like it's – that's a terrifying situation. If he's seven <laughs> stroke back, I'm like, okay, we're good yeah. type thing. Yeah. How many how many strokes is it for Kristen compared to the rest of the field? Well, I think for it. it she was back. Nine, I was gonna say, does Tom still have that that two <laughs> stroke just, buffer for Kristen, yeah. or is, maybe is it a four stroke buffer for Kristen? <laughs> um, well, I think it was actually eleven, Julie, but. Um, yeah i did know i did know and um i be it, it's based on the course that course is really difficult yes. um and somebody was gonna have to shoot at least eight to ten under to potentially catch me if i was having like a really bad day and shooting yeah. multiple over par um so again it kind of was like when i need to know um, he'll let me know, but otherwise, like that was enough for me to feel more than comfortable that you know, even if she has one of the best yep. days of her lives, like hopefully I'll still have an okay day and and still be able to come out with it. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna ask one more question, uh, yeah. and then I'm gonna bounce and try this other link because I'm going blurry again. Now, I, <laughs> I have I'm on fiber. I have no idea why I should never be blurry, but um, <laughs> my question is this. This event was just FPO. There was no men's tournament. There was nothing going on. It was literally just FPO out there. And from seeing the crowd, from seeing the viewership, it it was it was a successful event. There were a lot mm-hmm. of people that were paying attention, rooting for you guys. I thought the course also set up really well. We kind of mentioned it earlier. I believe you said hole 12. I think hole 17 had a great viewing area. Hole 18 had a great viewing area. Hole one, there was a bunch of people. There was another mm-hmm. par three where I think the brewery was maybe behind you and you were throwing into the woods that had a whole lot of people mm-hmm. behind as well. Yep, um, hole 10. Hole 10, yep. Uh, so I think it's set up really well for the spectators on the course. Does this success, seeing you know the women being able to go out and hold an event on their own, does this potentially give you guys – the idea and the other question on top of this, is this something that you want to potentially be able to have your own tour? Uh, I can see us having our own do- own tour, like uh, several years in the future. Um, I don't know how, quite how many, I think what makes this event successful is that there's like 350 people of all ages there with their parents and their significant others and family. And they try to make the tea times work so that, you know, when those people are done with their early morning rounds, they can come Uh. and watch us. Um, So I think it's not just those people, but the fact that there's already so many more people in the area and it was in Austin, which is a huge city with a lot of disc golf uh, fans that really helped as well. Um, so I think it just depends on where, where the event is. Um, and yeah, I, I just don't know that we can sustain quite yet on a, the normal tour by ourselves. I'm, I'm just not sure. Is that something that you guys want that. though? Is that, have you talked to other FPO players of wanting to branch out? How was, how was the experience too? Like from having MPO and, now you have just FPO. What was the experience like? Was it different? Like not having to tee like, off oh, at ten o'clock for a Lee card. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't mind teeing off early. It kind of was funny. Thankfully, I I'm also a golf fan, so I was able to watch the Valspar open in oh, the morning yeah. and kind of get into yeah. I got into kind of like a zen um, and be able to waste some time that way. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a really cool experience. I love, I mean, even this weekend at Houston, we're going to have two separate courses, mm-hmm. one for you guys, one for us. And that is always a little nicer in terms of traffic on the course um, and stuff like that. So there are some huge benefits for us to play different courses or separately. Um, I, do, I, I think that 
yeah, if we can if we can get the numbers up and we can get more women on tour and have you know over a hundred people wanting to play the events, we could like potentially branch off. Um, I think a lot of people now have significant others that also play. Yeah. Um, so that uh, that's a different situation than what I'm in, and so I know that that would be really hard for those people. Um, Tom, Tom's got game though. He does. Don't he does. Don't sleep on Tom. <laughs> that guy's got some game. I've seen him play before. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. He did shoot. He did throw a six hundred and something foot shot in the distance thing oh, at that. All Stars. Yeah, pretty cool. It's probably the best shot he's ever thrown in his life. <laughs> um, he, he had he said that he said that, <laughs> but um, yeah, maybe one day down the road. I don't know that it's like I can speak for everyone to say yeah, we all want that in the future. I think there will be a lot of people that would not want that and don't because of their significant other situation or whatever. Um, but. Yeah, if, if the numbers are there and if the money would be comparable or better, I think that that, I mean, I'm not against it. Um, but I also like, you know, I like watching watching the MPO players and and uh, tuning in. But I guess it's mostly from home, so it wouldn't matter at, at that point. But, yeah, I don't know. Uh, before you go, any new pet peeves? Oh. Any, 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 anything pop up new over the last couple of weeks before we, we since we talked to you? I thought of something. I don't even know if I gave mine last time because of the connection. Oh, was, you was might tough. not have. Yeah, this might um, be the first. I okay. I think my biggest pet peeve is like is like complete kind of like unawareness on the course from mm. like your competitors. Um, for instance, like. Or you like can drop names things. too if you want. No, no, or like little <laughs> things, little things like marking an OB lie. Like I don't need to ask my entire card as long as they confirm that I'm um, OB, which is part of the rules. I don't need to be like, is this good? Like it's right there. We're it's probably out right there. You know, but I I know I'm not going to try to cheat or get more feet or anything like that. Like I'm going to mark my lie and like try not to bother my card mates or get them out of the zone or like or if we're all at like you know, bullseye's edge. I'm not going to be like, Oh, who is it? Is it you? Is it me? You know, I think it's just, I like when people are just like ready to go Pace to play, baby. Yeah. Pace to play. <laughs> and, and just, yeah, I, you know, I get it when you're getting to like the 25 foot range and maybe it matters who goes first. Um, but yeah, little things like that, like just complete or, or if you're just like miles behind us on the fairway and it's like, you're obviously up, like, Come on, <laughs> let's go. So that's yeah, a good that's one. Probably my pet peeve. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, Yuli, I, I don't know if you were able to ask your question either. Cause I think her connection, you want to ask your question too? Yeah, I will ask. Um, out of all the women on tour, who do you like? Is there an attribute that they have that you look at? <laughs> Maybe just Attribute. just one person oh, yeah. and you look at it and you're like, Ooh, that's really nice. I wish I could do that. Or, <laughs> you know, maybe you just have a respect for somebody's ability mm -hmm. to do something well, really good. It's probably anybody that has a really efficient backhand uh, or forehand. I'm sorry, forehand. Um, because that's something that I hope to improve. Who do you think someday. has the best forehand on tour? Oh, I think it would be a toss up between like Haley King and like even Evelina. She mm -hmm. just has such good power and control. They both do. I think Haley has great like angle control. Um, and it looks really effortless when, when Haley throws the disc and, you know, with, yeah, with Evelina, it's just like pure power and just confidence in the forehand. So either, either one of those two players. I think. Nice. Yeah. yeah. No, it was, it was it was fun watching the contrast between your game and Evelina's uh that final round off the tee where you you were making the the backhand work on every hole and we were seeing, you know, some of the holes like where it's like, oh yeah, having a big forehand here would be advantageous, but you were able to kind of keep the disc in the fairway and a course like that that proved to to show like that was the big difference is, you know, keeping yourself always in play to give yourself mm -hmm. an outside look at birdie and, and not take big numbers out there. And uh, it led to a pretty, like you said, a pretty comfortable win to the point of where you, you were super aggressive <laughs> on 18 at the very, I wasn't trying. at the very I wasn't yeah, trying and I was like, Oh that. my God, yes, he just 
Just lay up. up. <laughs> this is the game is, the match is over. <laughs> I don't know why in that moment I was like, don't short it. Don't short it. <laughs> like, I don't know. Why was I so nervous on a shot that I literally could have thrown like four times? Seven times. So you could have literally been like, dit, dit, dit. I know. I know. I don't know what that was. That was weird. <laughs> um, but you got it done. First major ever. Probably now, I mean, looking at the way you played, I, I would, I would argue you know, you're probably going to be one of the top favorites going to the next major. So uh, we might be seeing a two X next to the uh, major title Mm -hmm. there, which would be uh, nice to add to the resume, but uh, well, even more so because it's at Northwood black, right? Yes. And then that, and that course is very similar. There's a lot of part fours that are very similar. So we will see. I've won that event twice. So, well, but is it, but, but it is, <laughs> it is, well, I guess it is more advantageous for you because you probably do better in Northwood because you guys play Northwood and then that other golf course, right? Uh, yeah. So yeah. And this one would just be Northwood. Do. This would just be Northwood, Which, but historically I've shot pretty well. I was going to say, you probably like yeah. that better. You probably like your chances better just being Northwood versus Northwood in the golf course. Yeah. Because, because sunset's kind of where everybody can kind of catch up, Yeah, you know, and, and do some damage. So, um, should be exciting. Yeah. Hopefully that should would be, be exciting. <laughs> I am uh, I'm looking forward to it. Well, uh, hopefully we didn't keep you too long. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much. I know all of our listeners and stuff are very excited for having you come on and, yes. uh, everyone in the chat was sending you congrats your way as well. So, uh, a lot of people were really excited to see you get your first big major win here. Uh, big money. I was going to say, is it a new potential, a new nickname instead of big money, mm-hmm. Missy, it might be big major money, Missy, like another M triple M. Maybe if I, maybe give me, if I win, you know, the next major, then maybe we'll talk about it. There you go. All right. Well, there you <laughs> have it folks. Missy Gannon, the latest major champion. Thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it. Have a wonderful Congratulations. night. Thank you so much. Thanks guys. All right. Take it easy.